All right, so last time we started talking about Hermitian operators, and we said, what's the what's definition of a Hermitian operator? Operator A, we say, is Hermitian if the integral of uh, f star a hat g d tau, where f and g are arbitrary functions, and integration over d tau means integration over all space, uh, is equal to what? the integral that you get if you switch f and g, so it's going to be g star a hat f d tau, but you have to take the complex conjugate after you do the switch. Okay? So, or we also introduce the bracket notation, which basically says, which we can write as f a hat g in brackets must be equal to g a hat f in brackets and then star also. Okay? So, uh, let's prove that operator A, as defined here, is not Hermitian. Okay? So let's do that. So what do we do? Well, basically we just need to ask ourselves, is F star A hat G D tau equal to integral of, what do I have here? G star A hat F D tau. Okay? Star on the outside. Or if I don't want to have to deal with star, I could actually just switch these two. I can say a f star, right? A hat f star g. G star star is g d tau. And this is, this is just multiplication, so I can switch. It's commutative. Okay? So, uh... In other words, you could write this as a hat g, uh, a hat f g. Okay? So, let's see, let's prove that that is in fact not the case here. So, let's start off with this one. Okay? So, what's our definition of a hat in this case? Operator A takes the derivative of the function with respect to x, so we're just going to go integral of f star, derivative of g with respect to x, and our d tau is going to be dx from negative infinity to infinity, assuming all possible x values, okay? And at this point, we're going to do to do a little calculus review. What's integral of u dv? Uh, integration by parts. This is equal to uv minus integral of v du. Remember that? Differential of a product is equal to the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay. So if I want to solve for u dv, and shift over to the left, and then that becomes my integration, my parts formula. Okay. So, oops. Uh, what do we have here? We're going to let u equal to f star, and we're going to let dv equal to dg dx dx. Okay. And basically, we're saying dv is equal to dg, right? So du, we say, is df star dx times dx. Got it? And v, did I start recording? Okay, and, and V is just equal to G. Uh, v is equal to G. Okay? So, what will that give me? So, 
let's go bring this one down here. So that's equal to U V U times B F star G evaluated from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Minus integral of V D U. What's V D U? G times D F star D X D X. Okay. From negative infinity to infinity. You got it? But since F and G are well behaved, okay? So F and G will go to zero as X approaches plus or minus infinity. These are well behaved functions. Okay? So this term right here is just zero. Okay? So this just gives me negative, okay, integral of g, and derivative of f star with respect to x is just derivative of f with respect to x star, okay? You should be able to show that, okay? You're taking complex conjugate of a derivative. Taking a derivative and taking the complex conjugate are, is a commutative pair of operators. Okay, so you can take the complex conjugate first and then take the derivative, or you can take the derivative and take the complex conjugate to get the same result. Okay, so this is from negative infinity to infinity dx. But what is this? This is negative infinity to infinity g. This is a hat f star dx, right? This is the derivative of f with respect to x is a hat f. So this is equal to negative integral of g a f star d tau. Okay? Or I can write that as negative a f star g d tau. How does that compare to what we have before? It's not the same. It's negative. So it's not our mission. Okay? Therefore, A is not Hermitian because this should have because of this negative term. So therefore, operator A is not Hermitian. Okay. Uh, you'll notice in the next couple of slides that what I'm going, what the video here is going to be different from what what happened in the classroom because I made a mistake there. So I'm replacing that segment of the video, the original video, with this corrected one. Okay. So at this point, we wanted to show that I a hat is a linear operator and we've already shown that a hat itself if a hat uh, is a derivative operator it takes a derivative of a function we've already shown that integral of f star a hat g d tau is equal to the negative of a hat f d g a hat f complex conjugate okay? g d tau, right? And so if not, if it weren't for this negative sign right here, A would have been a Hermitian operator. But because of that negative sign, we say that A hat, the derivative operator, is not Hermitian. So we're going to prove now that this operator right here, I A hat, is a linear operator. So I a hat simply means if you apply that on a function, you take the derivative of the function with respect to x and then multiply by i. Okay, so let's show that that is in fact equal to, and the way you show something is Hermitian is you move the operator inside the bra in front of the function in the operated on the function in the bra. So I'm going to say that's going to be i a hat operating on function f. 
star the whole thing and then times g integrate over all surfaces. Okay, so this is what we need to show. And this is actually pretty simple because you can realize that i is a constant and this bracket is nothing more than an integral. So we can move this constant out of our integral. So i, that becomes i f a hat g. Okay, and we've already shown what this is earlier. It's negative of integral of a f star g d tau. So this is negative i times negative of, I can move this thing over here, a hat f g. Okay? And so we can rewrite this as negative i integral of a f star g d tau. Uh, what is I, negative i? You know that negative i is just i star. Okay? I can move that back into the integral. Let me rewrite this. Negative i integral of a, a hat f star g d tau. So I'm going to move my i inside. So this becomes integral of i, negative i, which is i star. I'm going to call that i star now. So I star times A hat F star G D tau, which is just, well, I can move my I inside the parentheses in front of this A F function right here. But since I already have a star outside the parentheses, if I move it inside, that becomes I star star, so that this becomes an I. So it's going to be integral of I A hat F star G D tau. But that is just the same thing as bracket I A hat F. Okay. Inside with I A hat F inside the bra because of that star right there means the I A F is in the bra. And then G That is that one. So we've just proven that I A hat is a Hermitian operator. So for your homework, I need you to show that A squared is a Hermitian operator. And um, something that, just to get you started, it's important for you to realize that A squared is really A hat times A. So what you can do is, you do something like this. Okay. You need to show that that's the same thing as a hat f, a hat squared f, right? G. So how are you going to do that? Well, uh, here's something to get you started. What you can do is you can apply a hat on g. Okay. Remember this bar right here thing right here. You can take it on and off. So this becomes a, a hat a hat g. Okay? Now you know that a hat is a Hermitian op is not a Hermitian operator. But so you know but you know what happens if you switch switch it around. It becomes it gives you a negative of the uh, the negative of what you want to expect for a Hermitian operator. Okay, so if you did that, so let me just give you step two. So we have fewer steps to worry about. If I were to move this one over here, I already know that, I've already shown that if I did that, A hat F, A hat G, that I have to put a negative sign because A hat is not a Hermitian operator. Okay, so find a way to get from there for the next slide, okay, you have to prove that a multiplicative operator is Hermitian. Uh, let's make that correction. It has to be a real multiplicative operator. Because if you have, for example, f i hat g, where i is just a multiplicative operator, 
Okay. Then what happens? If you move the I outside, that's I F G. Okay. Uh, let's just do that with the integral. If I did the uh, integral there, integral of F star I G B tau, I can move up my I. That becomes I F star G B tau. Okay. Now if I want my I operating on F. What, what would I have to do? I have to move it back in, in front of the F. So I will have to call that I star star is I. F star G B tau. Okay. I star star is I. And so this will allow me to combine. That gives me the I and the F. I star F star G B tau, okay, which is the same thing as negative I F star G B tau, okay, and so I can pull pull out my negative one, so that's negative of I F star G B tau, so that is that's negative of I F G, which is not correct, which is not, which means that I is not a okay. So keep in mind moving things in out of the bra. If you put something inside the bra, you put a star on it, you would take something out of the bra, you have to remove a star from it. So this one, we say the I operator, if all it does is multiply the function by I, is not a Permission operator. And that's kind of the reason why if you multiply I and A together, those two negatives that come out cancel each other out. That's why I A hat is a permission operator. But in general, if you have a re multiplicative operator that's just real, okay? So the operator itself is not, its complex conjugate is the same, then you should be able to show that that is permission.